Okay, I'm doing this tonight as a um, just to prove that this actually is in fact my um, my window for my kitchen. There, there's the outside out there. I don't know. You can't even barely see out there. Um, I don't know how to make it better. Um, oh, that's not the grass. <laughs> that's not the grass or bushes or anything like that. I don't know what the fuck that is. Oh, that's that's mold on the other opposite side of it. But my view originally, where I'm standing right now, my my phone's about a, a little bit far from my face right now. I'm like right here from it. I've never seen it like that before. Held up. That um, that close. So it has a totally different effect on it. See what I'm saying? And so you can see things there that, that, that give an effect about something. So I've got to hold it like this if I want to do something like that, like see like that. And um, I, can, I can run around and do stupid shit all over town. Um, but it's just, um, it's neat to see. Oh, there's my right brain again. There's a little, looks like a, oh, looks like a koala bear. Look, there's, or some kind of bear or a raccoon. Look, add an effect like that to it. You know, it's an effect of, that you would see out in space as well somewhere from a certain angle, looking in a certain direction. If you had enough, you know, free space to turn around and stuff without all this other shit getting in your way, I reckon. I'm not sure, but uh, I think there's an effect somewhere that would um, be able to show you what life looks like or what the universe looks like, you know, at advanced ages, like way out there where it's real far away where you can see if you were actually close to it, in fact. I think that's an example, but I'm not sure. Like, this is what it's going to look like. I don't know how long, but when you zoom out away from it, there's different things that you can, you can take note of and you can almost see it's a pattern that repeats elsewhere in the universe. This is something that's happening elsewhere. I mean, can you imagine that phenomenon, what it will look like, you know, when you actually see it in space couple telescopes. See right there, when um, you're seeing an example of time, the way it affects things. Now, in, um, in terms of your own human, um, you know, physiological frame rate for um, your consciousness, you know, it's, as you see it happening live, it's something that is that big, that is one of you as well. Um, you can't imagine how unfathomable that would be. Um, but there's a look at that thing. There's that. That's definitely looking like got teeth. See right. See right. Um, see right there. There's teeth, and then there's two eyes and a nose. It's some kind of skeleton looking thing. But see, you would see these patterns. Look at that, son of a bitch. How could that? Let's see. Like, I didn't put that there. Maybe I'll erase it. See what if it does something else that's fundamentally. Um, you can make it. You know. Um, because it's something else that you would. Or ordinarily observe in reality somewhere else just by the normal um, overlay of my <laughs> looks like of my consciousness um, you know my decision making having you know as I'm applying more and more force to it to move you know just I'm, I'm like I'm doing one of those movements and it's happening there's a, there's a pattern in there and you're, and you're catching a, a piece of it you know where it is and it looks like it's a singular mo motion, but it, you can see how that pattern would repeat indefinitely elsewhere if we give it enough time. I think that's the effect that it, it recognizes. Um, so, also let's go over here. I'll, with, along with this, I'm going to include a few images that I caught the other day during the daylight. And you can see there's actually um, nice, nice big oak trees outside and such that you can see on my Facebook page, those who know me. Um, so I, I was in here and it was, I, let till, I was waiting until the sky got the right shade of blue. It was dark. And I uh, got some shots, you know, going, um, held it. You know, I got up close and I was taking different angles. You know, I noticed with the moss, it's a different species than the um, than the, uh, the regular tree. So I know there's a different um, age dis distinction. There's a, there's something that's off in the timing, in the way that the um, not only the timing but the form as well, in terms of how distant they are, in terms of the um, the um, DNA strand um, locations on um, the the flow chart from um, least complex to most complex, where they are relative to each other. That's um, a distinction that's uh, but I know, of course, there's a fine, you know, there's a smooth iterated um, transition between any two st DNA strands in general, no matter which ones they are, anywhere they are, um, on that on that strand listing in the universal um, uh, sum total of uh, all things, you know, there's a universal listing, of course, of all DNA st strands in general. Um, just in each, you know, the, the unit of iteration that changes, let's say you've got a, is, is one um, atom at a time, as it, you know, undergoes its smooth um, transition from one to the other to the other and branching out in animal space and maybe you're familiar with the term uh, that um, Richard Dawkins coined in this um, I think it was selfish gene or the blind watcher I'm not sure but it was, you know it's definitely a 
a real place, and that's where we exist a priori before the universe turns into this embodiment of you know substance as it undergoes one instance of it and sees its relationship you know from the you know it's a the ongoing expansion of your subjective experience why you are you here now so you know I'm not giving you the shadow version <laughs> but if I were I would look magnanimous you know what I mean but behind supposedly um, but th this is my um this is my little beat laboratory I've really accomplished a lot of things tonight in terms of uh what I've laid out, you know, for you. Well, it, what's important though to note is that that image that I saw. Remember when I had the blue light? I was talking about what I, the um, the trees look like outside and the relationship between the, the moss and the, and the trees. Well, the moss, you know, they grow in a way that's um, with the trees branching out. They form a, they form different lines at 90 degree angles, such that you didn't see the branching complexity in relation to those lines. Those those um. Those existential areas that, that that range in blurriness, so to speak, um, that that's where the transition occurs. If you were to see the branching out um, live, and you know when you see um, like your camera read just focus, the same sense happens. If you saw, we would see that happening in reality, that's the form of your. That's another one of those. It's one of those things that's an aspect of it in general. Um, and so, I wanted to um, show you what it, what's gonna what the pictures entail. This is the, what they mean to me. How I my eye catches them. You know, in terms of, um, because it's a picture of a castle, a citadel, with a flag in the background, and it's my house where I live, on the castle where I own, and it's like my place. It's like I own it, and I project what I am into it, okay, into it. That's what I understand. And so you see a black flag, of course. And this is the flag that controls, you know, we're, I was a class of 06, November Company, 4th Battalion. Um, and that, um, the way that, it under, that you understand it, you, the loyalty score versus your merit score, you know, your merit makes, you know, what are you good at? What are you going to do when you get there? What's your specialty? You know, I'm the guy who uh, brings a whole other group of countries into our side. You know, we join, we link up with the rest of the universe, the other you know, the universal, universal forces of good. You know, and all, you know, the kingdom of God that we uh, you know, we lead that we we link up with them. You know, when we want to fight a war with any person on Earth that gets to fight with us. You know, who are mortal enemies and such that um, who what would I, you know, fuse the best strategy. In terms of you know victory, what would I want to do? I would want to link up with the biggest group that controls that half of the planet. You know the universal forces of good in general. If I'm on that side, there, there's no way you can lose in general. Um, so that's the military. Um, just that it's a it's an existential thing that's just a priori. If you don't know, you don't know it. Um, so my my loyalty score um, is um, another another function of that that is. Um, way that it comes in and, you know how strong it is you know when you're going to see it um this is what it's made out of though um, my loyalty score is pretty essentially um this also incorporates why the merit is at the bottom is you start seeing the flow chart i was playing with the notes me this took forever for me to do so forever and doing this in heaven uh, but my loyalty rating you know it'd be um my, my historical narrative um you know what my um relation is to um let's say my, there's a royal family or whatever, so to speak, or the historical part of, you know, in the United States, of course, we don't know who the Washingtons are, the Jeffersons. I mean, today they aren't really in a position based on what those people were. But say if there were, a, um, a, you know, they don't, they don't weigh their opinion in on who they're going to vote for today. You know, what, what, you know, during the Civil War, they don't tell you um, who Washington's family, you know, who his great, you know, well, I don't know if it was his great grandson, I think it was his grandson or less. You know, that was the, the generation, you know, difference when it started. You don't see the family portraits of them getting ready to go into the Civil War, getting ready to go to it. Um, you have Washington's family, Jefferson's family, and so they don't show you the, how, who they voted for, so to speak. All right, I'm one of those people, um, not in the same sense, but, um, yeah, in the same sense of um, within the South itself, um, where I, my, my historical uh, narrative lines up, and... Um, we took over after Jefferson Davis stepped down, okay, for the Confederate government, which is not, you know, technically, I understand the flowchart because James, okay, this is how it works. Jesse James, okay, 1865 surrenders, 1877 um, the reconstruction ends. That's when we all changed their, that's when they all changed their name to Gilstrap. Um, that's the, um, in my grandmother's, um, the Cherokee, my grandfather was the, the white. I don't understand her, her ranking within that variable of you know, her people, whatever. So we brought in a bigger side. You know, we brought in a bigger side with the Cherokee. All I know is that the Trail of Tears was orchestrated by Sherman. And so Native Americans, particularly the, the Cherokee in general, they, they're the only ones that signed all the trees with the Confederate government a priori, you know, going into it. So she would have had special relevancy 
um, is somewhere in that picture. I don't know what it means though. Um, so there's a lot of, um, and then there's of course the ideological, and there's all the reasons why, you know, coming down there's all how Buddhism works in relation to Africa, going all the way up to its uh, um, geographic uh, properties that give rise to um, physical form in the um, biolog biological, you know, units that are growing and changing across the surface on, on very, you know, unified specific trajectories according to the lines of form or existential lines that govern the, uh, the ability, um, their, their constraints on the, you know, self, you know, ability of self-replicating, well, all self-replicating entities in general will follow the lines of demarcation based on these numbers. And so there's going to be growing trends based on things that are unique only to Africa. And I can understand why, um, let me just re read this, uh, the fundamental physical properties of Africa such that, um, something uh, stands out in relation to the rest of the surface. What makes Africa so special, you know, according to the rest of the surface, in terms of why their ideology may be, um, what, what, what makes Buddhism correct? How do we know anything about Buddhism if we don't know anything about Buddhism? How, would it, how what are its origins? We know what science is, why science is right, because it uses math and stuff, because AP, you know, A plus B equals C and all that, so we know about it. Where it comes from, how, where, you know, all that kind of stuff. This is more based on, um, we're using that Africa is the only continent, you know, it's, it doesn't change up and down based on, the, on temperature changes. That's what's not significant about it. It's the way that water goes up and down in this region right here. This region right here, okay? Um, that's what makes it special. I don't really, uh, I'm on, all off topic now because I was so excited about describing myself and all this other shit. But I don't you know, the fun, I'm not explaining the fundamental things in the ways that I should at this moment. Um, uh, let's see here. That's, a, that's the only reference that I have for the information I have about that. And I've looked everywhere um, by Tom Clancy. So that's my source I'm using right now. I've read that entire book inside and out. I know most of it very well. But the fundamental thing about this, it describes physical properties you know, of the, of the you know, natural selection strengths. Um, you know, strengths, you know. And I look at natural selection in three group, a group of three things, in three general categories. There's natural selection, sexual selection, of course, survival of the fittest. And... Um, to me, those that each one is a category of the type of selection pressure. So I'm, you know, I consider myself an expert on Darwinian theory. Um, let me, you know, I'll explain. Um, let's see on the page. All right, in terms of Darwinian theory, um, let's see. Uh, well, we're talking about Vadun. Vadun is the only native um, African language that's ever existed. You know. It's the only one native to the continent. The only two existing religions on the continent today are Roman Catholicism, of course, and Islam. But before, um, the, you know, Vadun disappeared, um, we also assumed, of course, came with its own phonetic language that gave rise to that, you know, understanding of the way it, you know, interacted with, you know, the way it um, grappled across the surface. But, um, let's see, what are we going to talk about? I'll just show you everything that's written first. The notes. We can, of course, go over it. Um, I mean, uh, but anyway, uh, oh, I had a separate piece of paper in general. Look at this. I had it written on. Look, I was going to show you. It is actually written, uh, signed by the author, Robert Ferrigo. Um I'll show you both sides of this thing. So Jesse James was important because the Confederate government, you know, after 1877, um, we don't really know anything that happened. But he was, uh, my family came from um, Cedar River, or not Cedar River, but, um, I think there was a Cedar Creek or some shit like that where they used to find um like um they found just buttons that were sitting there on rocks one day in a perfect line or whatever they'd just been sitting there since the guy put his jacket down the whole jacket had dissolved and rotten and buttons were the only thing that were left they just found them in a nice neat order like that like that um so my grandfather understands information that he told me I don't know if it's true or not um so here's uh, Quantrill's Raiders which was under Jesse James during the uh, reconstruction the Ku Klux Klan was on this side and uh that's another. What does that say? I remember after I see it. Oh, this is where uh, um, trail, it started somewhere in this region. The Trail of Tears itself, specifically for the Indians, started here. West Florida dragoons were, you know, they, they were dragged, you know, that way, you know, all that way. Um, that's where the, I think the origin of the Bonnie Blue flag came into existence. It's a, you know, field of blue with one star. They just grabbed the star and they're taking it away. They bring them back their flat, their star, some something of that silly, you know, effect. But um, 
What else is in here? Just oh, here's South Florida. I don't know where West Palm is, but it's it's different. In, it's ter different in terms of danger. I, I'm not sure if that comes into relevancy in play, but I don't know if anyone knew that. This is what's, what the Pacer said. So I don't know if it's it, you know in terms of growing trends. I didn't write the book, of course. I promise. Um, Although it appears as if I'm presenting it that way on accident, so it looks like it's a purpose, but I did not. Um, I'm just showing why it may have been passed on to me, like some kind of weird extraterrestrial, you know, illegal alien sort of way. Someone who didn't um, necessarily need to be looking after me it was like following me around, leaving shit in the library so they knew I'd get it. I was already interested in that shit already. But um, uh, anyway, uh, one of the books that helped me, you know, analyze, you know, I'm very fond of is that book. I met the man in real life at UNF. He's kind of a weird guy. He walks up really sort of a, his own style of fucking dress in general. He's fucking crazy looking. Um, but he was the one that coordinated the, uh, the whole idea of thinking about things in terms of what he calls geographic determinism land features. You know, altering, you know, the course of, or trajectory of cultures in terms of resources they need to acquire based on what they have. You know, most people look at Asia. Eurasia is something special because it's the only continent in the world that's longer east to west than it is north to south. They think that's what makes it special. Africa, in fact, is, in, is special in a different way. It's more fundamental and deeper. Um, such that um, there's a place right here where the water comes in and out in a rhythmic way. That it, it, it's, like a soft, it's like having a soft bottom. Okay, there's no aquifer like in Florida. There's a bad rock separating you know, the water underneath it. Okay, so there's like, it comes in further. Let's see here. It, uh, where did I have that fucking, <laughs> I had that freaking awesome paper that was about why, I have to go without my notes on it, then I have another piece of paper around here somewhere, but it's about why the, um, um, come pushing in east, from the east to the west, you know, the water is able to, um, come in further east and west as, as it's going up, so you have this huge area that transitions from swamp to, um, desert, and in a massive way, it's all through, um, head, you know, that's headquartered in Botswana. In general, it runs in parallel with the religion itself. So you should see the, the, the um, formation of biology emergent, you know, coming from these trends. And that's the headquarters of the religion. Okay, so that gives reference to the, the whole notion of a garden. With, you know, <laughs> what I mean, a gardening thing, system. Um, and so it's a place where you, they, they believe that that's where, um, the, um, imagine there's a rhythmic pattern such that, you know, the tides are a direct correlation of it in a very smaller instance of the, recurring, you know, um, process, but imagine that occurring, you know, in the, across the planet in a way that, you know, when the, when the, when the, pl when the plates and, well, when the earth takes its, you know, it's rotating in a, in a circle, but it also pivots like a, like a, like a top slowing down to another angle. So when the water changes along those lines as well, that's what this thing has a flux. The, the bottom part of Africa, you know, has a flux where that happens. Okay. Very frequently. So you're all, you're constantly seeing something, you know, there's high, high, um, uh, there's a high, um, pat, there's a, you know, where things can crawl up and they're left to die, you know, there's a selection of pressure that gets in, you know, crunches real fast. There's much, much less space, you know, along the, uh, the constraint of water availability. And, um, that's what has caused the, uh, we believe the, um, the emergent, um, pattern we see there. Amphibians in general, okay, all amphibians, all frogs in general, okay, <laughs> have, um, it turns out, that's the laying eggs in general, okay, when water goes away after you've been swimming a long time and it dries up all the way and you have to wait for it to come back in general. Um, something to that extent. Um, so it's, it's a fundamental thing, the way that, you know, the swamp turns into desert, the, the, the smooth iterated transition, you know, as it recedes, the water line recedes, how that, you know, what it looks like and how it happens and how, on a very small micro level, what the individual instances of creatures, what they have to do in order to um, self, you know, self-replicate. If those are, you are know, very familiar with evolution, don't need to get into why that's so. Um, the, the constant of iterated generations with each instance of a generation being, you know, having constraints, you know, that are applied over and over again, you just magnify it by a billion, and you're looking forward, you can see the trajectory might, it, the trend might be, looking backwards, you can see what things, you know, what can't be and what must be. Now, why it is he, from here. Um, and so you can see this um, very, I mean, amphibians in general, which gave rise to reptilians in general, which, you know, that, that process there, that flux there, is what's so unique against, you know, the, you know, the whole, you know, rest of the surface of the planet Earth. And so you can only see as Buddhism emerging from that place in general. Um, so, well, well my, my, um, one of the things I have um, 
very little knowledge in is the um, within Asia. Um, just the different way might be that um, and I, you know, pre you know when they first were born, we're learning that the, the oral language is of course unified. Um, but when they get the rule system and limbic system, they learn. Well, when the first when they learn the naming system, the nomenclature, those are the things which they love and need. Um, but before that, they, they based their the internal, you know, you know, workings on what you know, pain avoidance and pleasure seeking, with an emphasis on pain avoidance, of course, so the trend is in that direction in terms of how many you know, number of vocab words you might form. Um, to label different things that understand it a little better. What, so to speak, I'm thinking it's going to be like that. But um, once it gets to the part where they have the, the, the whole book of rules for everything. Once they absorb, you know, the um, deep memory of the species itself and their notation, okay, as they uh, absorb, as they owned it coming up and kept it, you know, solid, you know, what that, what the deep reservoir, how big is, you know, what does it come up with when you look at it at a dimensional difference like this? Boom. What do they have compared to the other places? And what, do, you know, what does it mean once they absorb that language? Okay, and start reading and absorb, the, you know, the, um, they've got their dictionary. What does it mean when they um, pick that pick that up? How heavy is it? You know, what does it mean? What are their brains like in difference? You know, relative to us. And then there's the Asians, of course. That we, the only reason they have relativity and why they're the atheist man from China today is they've got mathematics and of course they understand relativity and they see it um, right in lines of, of parallel understanding of all things. And so that's what um uh, the notes here. Oh yeah, here's um here's the flow chart for the West. Okay, of course we were all. Um, Newtonian until 1860, 1859. That's in the main division within all um, Europe, Europe itself in general. Okay, we're, we we continue to stay right brain. Okay, because of a system of gatekeeping. Okay, the, um, one of the greatest um, truths that we first discovered when we discovered evolution is that um, well, let's hope that this, this dreadful theory is not true. You know, within the domain of Newtonian physics, let us hope that this dreadful theory is not true. But if it is true, um, let us much more so hope that the lower classes never discover it. And so along that line of constraint within um, the, um, the idea of Newtonian physics, that constraint holds true until the very end we get to Einstein, okay? This is when we change from right brain only in the south. This whole entire region of the, of the world right here was, you know, within, within Europe was constrained, you know, by its own, um, geo you know, geographic, you know, legal constraints there, we gatekeeping in terms of society blocking out in terms of an iron curtain, all right, people to people to people, keep an iron curtain on your emotions, don't love them, you don't teach them these things ever, um, and so now this, this is the region right here where we gain an interpreter module that allows us to, um, the interpreter module was, let's see, it's when we, there's a union here between both halves of our brain where we line up, you know, um, well, after we learn um, that the universe, the, the, the some, I mean, the complete structure of it in general is different in terms of, you know, how the mind stores, you know, people that aren't here anymore, or you know, how do we think about that? Um, my, my, I had my own little idea. Um, let's see here. Uh, where did I get that? Here, oh yeah, relation, con, relations conceptually to you're not with, that's not with. Uh, you're dead. Never, never. Are there is there a place for them to hold? Um, an idea of ne never here, but still real. Um, beings that are never here in general on Earth, but they're still real. And is it some total of all possible beings in general, okay? Look how distinct th their notation is in terms of their own organizational structure that's consistent within itself as a solid form. Okay, that means attain its, its integrity over time in general, okay? You're understanding the thing that can link up with, you know, any... I mean, it's, it's crazy how... What that means in terms of in terms of magnitude, how hard it pulls, how deep it is in terms of how saturated the color is in terms of imaging, okay, you know, disbursement in general, okay, that's pretty much the way I see it um, at this point now. Just you know, there's um, I don't want this file size to be too big, so I will get back with you later in the morning. But I'm talking. All right, give up some new stuff here. This is my flow chart about how I am um, came to decide where to put things. Um, so I know that the language is being read this way, so if I, I want to have it reflect, I want some uh, focal point direction to go back the other way, you know, what's the first thing that grabs your attention from your angle, what does it center over then what do you look at next, after that, and after that, and after that, um, I'm showing you the way that changes, you know, according to other things, and so I ended up putting nice that thing, son of a bitch, you know, because it reminded me of that stupid green mirror, that was, you know, of course, I imagine, 
in my mind, what would, it, what would it be like if you saw, saw a being where that was a little a in terms of the relationship of that size to the size of its total structure, how big it would have to be, you know, in terms of its relationship to my structure. And I'm saying that's a, that's a direct um, way of seeing things in general according to this. It would probably be, because this was a priori to the rest of the image, all this other shit, these were two mirrors that came off. And then I, and they, as they fell off these parts here, um, where, where glue was stuck, this was existential to the image. And so everything that came on, um, you know, this happened first. This was here first. The, so the, um, the layering of it, in terms of chronology, it starts here and moves out from each one uniformly. Okay. Um, in terms of what, what you drew next after that, but the colors you can determine, the imaging, the darker stuff, they came and drew on diff with different substance, the oil or whatever. This is here first, and they came back after that, and then it brought stuff away. So things are coming in, and but the marker, you can see which parts of the marker were there first. That shape um, of the forms, so it's it's a little bit of a different nature when you start seeing it. And you, that, the focal points are moving around in a different way and adding things um, for different reasons. A priori, and your brain picks up on that that very nature. Um, sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. I I don't really know. I don't want to say anything that I don't know. But I'm just saying what's coming to my mind at this point in time now. Um, that could be a, a different kind of system. I do like to um, look at the shadows on the ceiling, what's coming across. Sometimes, you know, I put my hat up there because I had a little triangle on it that reminded me to do so. I don't know what that meant. Did you guys see one of these in the other videos? And what did it mean to you? What does it mean now? Um, uh, and so it's just sort of one of those things in general that um, I think might we need we might need to say when we, when we come out and look at things all the time. You know, do we want them now? Do we want them later? What do we want to do with them when they get here? Are they are they welcome here? What does this remind you of in general? What about this one here? I mean, if your greatest fantasy were to come true, you know, some kind of great scheme of things, what would I be doing? Okay, um, how how you know what would it be like in terms of okay, we got back. We won. Thank you. All right. Done. Thank you. Like one of those things, dude. Isn't that awesome? All right. I'm the king, dude. Charlie Vance sucks balls, but.